but it was a stretching of my capabilities to encompass more. The good thing about Spain was that I really had to scratch to make ends meet. You get a feeling of what it's like to bring your wits to bear on real situations, you know? If, for example, I traded a painting to a priest, and he made sure I got a winter's supply of cheese and powdered milk and a couple of shirts. I'd never realized before what it would be like to without anything to eat. And I found that there's a beautiful reality in surviving at a basic level. By the time four years had passed, I felt I was Spanish and a lot smarter than I'd ever been. A year after his arrival, he successfully applies for a $900 scholarship from the Greenshields Foundation in Montreal. Dear Mr. Greenshields, someone showed me an article in the London Times about the fund you're setting up. I too feel the humiliation put upon classic art by modernism must be remedied. I'm asking you to help my opposition to it. In addition to the scholarship, he has a job teaching English. A fellow teacher at the school is the English painter, Tony Lyons. Nothing came between him and exactly what he wanted to do, what he had to do, and, and that was that. And if he suffered to, to get what he wanted, then he didn't mind suffering. Among Jack's Spanish friends, the painter he most admired was Antonio Lopez. From the first things he did at the school to these works from his last years, he had in his color something very luminous, which I think came from his personality, his spirit, from his intuition. I remember his works at the school, very serene works, seemingly serene. But if you penetrate them a little, you will find a tormented person, a struggle that came from within. But it isn't easy to see. He wasn't a Latin man. He takes for granted the deprivals and prescriptions of life under Franco's dictatorship. In the Prado Museum, he is strongly affected by the traditional motifs of Spanish art. The theme you can trace through Spanish painting is the religious aspect of Spaniards, you know, of the Spanish nation. They're rooted in that. Most of Spanish painting is right from the 12th, I guess, centuries, is all this martyrdom stuff, you know? He himself becomes attracted to Catholicism and the martyrdom stuff but for a practical reason. He believes the spiritual discipline of the Catholic faith will help him develop the discipline he needs in his work. When he told me one day, that, uh, he told me as though he were telling me that he was thinking of going to see a film or, I don't know, a bullfight or something like that. He said, look, he said, I'm going to be baptized a Catholic. He said, on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, I have to be with the priest and he's going to baptize me. He said, I want you to be my godfather and your wife to be my godmother and that's that. In 1958, he wins the state prize for figure painting and a scholarship from the academy. It is one of the happiest times of his life. He falls in love with the Castilian landscape. The following year, he falls in love with Olga Sanchez Bustos, the daughter of a Spanish gentleman. 
She has spent most of her first 18 years in an Argentinian convent. On their first date, Jack surprises her with a lunch of bread and tomatoes on a park bench. The summers are good, but the past winter in Madrid, his last at the academy, has dragged. He has spent most of his time painting in his rented room. At the time, he writes, I'm beginning to have my first taste of a magnificent experience, which demands nothing less than all of one's energy, and is terribly let down and looks hurt if you can't sweat blood for it. longs to get away from the academy now, and away from Madrid. Jose Luis Belaguerro, painter friend of mine from Zaragoza, said he'd seen some really fine landscape around a village called Chinchon. We took a bus to Chinchon. He was right. There were vistas of ash and gold-colored earth, from which grew the delicate silver green of olive trees and the electric yellow leaves of the muscatel grape when the early morning sun shoots through them. I came to Chinchon in midsummer and stayed two winters. Chinchon is no stranger to painters. Goya lived here at the end of the 19th century, impregnating, so the legend goes, half the women in the village, and as an act of penance, painting the ascension for the village church. Jack rents a room for 25 cents a month and quickly blends into village life. Many of his friends at the time are still to be found in Chinchon today. We organized some grand lunches in the countryside. They took the morning to prepare, a few hours to consume, and a day to recover from. You really can't plan these things, said Gregorio. They're best when they just happen, and so it was. <laughs> Jose Balaguerro recalls how it often went when the men of the village would come to Jack's studio. Come, we'll get some wine and set up a table in the sun. No, no, Jack would say, I have to work. But as the villagers got up to leave, he always gave in. Ah, what the hell, there'll be time to paint tomorrow. Gregorio, the local butcher. Jack is